Optical calculation offers several possibilities for calculating the coupling efficiency of a laser beam injected into a fiber optic. These possibilities are available with the handy and the advanced calculation tools. In handy calculations, one can compute the efficiency for the direct coupling of a laser beam and for the coupling with systems using up to two ideal lenses. Advanced calculations can calculate the coupling efficiency after propagation of the beam through a real system which can contain more than two lenses. Whatever the tool, handy or advanced, the laser beam can be Gaussian or elliptical and the fiber optic can be single mode or multimode. Note that coupling efficiency calculations in multimode fiber optics are also available in the application for uncoherent sources and not only for lasers. Let's see now how we can use both the handy and advanced tools for sizing a lens enabling to inject a collimatic beam into a single mode fiber. The methodology for solving this use case is always the same. First step, the optimal focal length for a maximum coupling efficiency has to be calculated. Second step, the coupling ratio has to be checked using an ideal lens with the previously calculated focal length. Third step, a real lens with the previously calculated focal length and with minimized spherical aberration must be designed or chosen in a supplier catalog. And fourth step, the coupling ratio with this real lens must be calculated. Steps one and two can be processed with the handy calculations tool and step four with the advanced calculations one. In the present case, the laser is an helium neon laser emitting in the red at 633 nanometer. Its collimated beam has a one millimeter diameter, which is supposed to be the waist diameter. The beam is supposed to be perfectly Gaussian and therefore its M square is equal to one. The single mode fiber has a four microns mode diameter. This mode is supposed to be Gaussian. The maximum coupling efficiency is achieved when the waist of the emerging beam is focused by the lens on the fiber entrance and when its diameter is equal to the fiber mode diameter. Let's start by the first step. Let's go in the laser and beam propagation topic of the handy calculations tool. In the section optical system for adapting two beams, the page paroxyl system adapting two Gaussian beams will calculate the adequate focal length. Here, W0 is the half diameter of the incident beam waist. WI0 is the half diameter of the fiber mode. S is the algebraic distance from the lens to the incident beam waist. As the beam is collimated, this distance has a minor importance. Lam is the wavelength. As said before, the m square factor is considered equal to 1. The page calculates the focal length of the lens, making it possible to shape the beam with a waist size equal to wi0, which is that of the fiber mode. The page calculates also the position of the emerging beam waste. In general, there are two solutions to this problem. Here, the only suitable solution is the one with the positive focal length. As for the other solution, the emerging beam waste is located before the lens and is therefore virtual. The optimal focal length is then 4.96 mm. For the second step, let's go now in the fiber optic and coupling in a single mode fiber topic. In the Gaussian beam section, the page coupling with a single lens allows to calculate the coupling efficiency. W0 is the incident beam waste radius. Z is the algebraic distance from the lens to the incident beam waste. Lam is the wavelength, Fi is the focal length, 4.96 mm in our case, Wf is the fiber mode radius, and T is the system transmission including the Fresnel reflection at the fiber entrance. 
Let's take it to one for the moment. The other parameters are related to misalignments. We only consider a perfect alignment where the fiber and trans facet is perfectly coinciding with the emerging beam waste. The coupling ratio is 100% as expected. Let vary the focal length from 4 mm to 6 mm in order to check what is the sensitivity of the coupling efficiency on the focal length. The minimum value is 95%, so the sensitivity on the focal length is quite low. We can estimate that the focal length between 4 mm and 6 mm will not make a huge difference. Previous calculations consider only perfect lenses, but the coupling efficiency will be obviously impacted by the aberrations when using a real lens. As the lens is working on axis and with a monochromatic light source, only the spherical aberration can be an issue. It is well known that plain spherical lenses are in general cheap and have a limited spherical aberration for incident collimated beams with relatively small diameters. There are several plain spherical lenses available with focal length between 4 and 6 mm and in particular with 5 mm focal length. An example is a lens made of BK7, which is the most common glass. With a center thickness of 2 mm and a radius of curvature of 2.5754 mm for its spherical face, we can check, still with an adequate page from the handy calculations tool, that the focal length at 633 nm is 5 mm. I will not do it in this presentation, but this page can be reached from the Geometrical Optics Paraxial Parameters topic. It is the page titled Real Lens in the Focal Length and Principal Planes subsection. Note that for this check, the actual considered wavelength of 633 nm has to be previously entered in the wavelength page accessible from the General Parameters button. We will consider this presented lens for the step 4. Let's go now on the advanced calculations tool. We can enter this lens as well as the fiber and laser parameters through the user interface. For saving time, the file including these parameters are, has already been saved, so I just have to upload it in the dedicated cell. We can check that the lens parameters, the laser beam parameters, and the wavelength are the right ones. The aperture of the system is 1 mm, which is coherent with the beam diameter as around 86.5% of the pore is contained in it. The fiber optic mode is defined by its numerical aperture. It specifies the angle of the acceptance cone containing a certain fraction of power of the fiber mode. This fraction of power is defined in the cell with the same name. Here, as the considered fiber optic has a 4 micron diameter mode at 633 nm, the entered numerical aperture is defined as the sinus of the fiber mode half divergence. The corresponding acceptance cone contains therefore 86.5% of the fiber mode power. The mode divergence has been previously calculated with the dedicated page in the laser and beam propagation topic of the handy calculations tool. Note again that in the present case, the beam is collimated with a small divergence. The real beam propagation is close to the propagation of light rays coming from an object at infinity and calculated using geometrical optic theory. Therefore, the spherical aberration is close to the one obtained with an on-axis object at infinity. The observation surface has been positioned at 5 mm from the last surface, 5 mm being the effective focal length. We can see on a retracing that the observation surface is slightly defocused. It is because the lens has a certain thickness and the focal plane is not exactly at 5 mm from the last optical surface. Therefore, we first have to calculate its optimal position by computing a best focus. The best focus tries to find the position lowering the average aberrations 
including the focus for all the active fields. The only field of interest in our case is the on axis field, which is thus the only one activated. Let enter the calculated value as the distance from the last optical surface up to the observation surface. We can see now on a retracing that the observation surface is correctly located. We can check also on a spot diagram that the spherical aberration is low. The system is diffraction limited. The waste cannot be at infinity. As it is located in the object plane, we have to place now the object at a finite distance from the first surface. In the present case, the value of this distance has a minor impact on the coupling efficiency calculation, but it must be specified. Whatever the waste position, the light rays launched for the coupling efficiency calculation will still be close to those launched from a non-axis object at infinity, and the aberration will remain close to the one previously calculated with an object at infinity. So remember that the rays will not be launched from the defined object position as is the case for the current geometrical optics calculations. Once the parameters are entered, I just have to click on the laser coupling in a single mode fiber calculation. You can see that the coupling ratio is 86% if we are not considering the system transmission and if the Fresnel reflection at the fiber entrance are null. We can see that it's not 100% as for a perfect lens. If we introduce Fresnel reflections, which are in general equal to 4% for a silica fiber, the coupling efficiency go down now to 82%. If the system transmission with uncoated surfaces is considered, it finally drops to 75%. Note that these calculations are not considering eventual misalignments that can, however, be simulated by moving the observation surface to which the fiber optic is attached.